This is our lesson on acaiots. For the objectives at the end of this lesson, the students would be able to describe and give examples of acaiots. And as well, the students would be able to describe the structure of a typical virus and to also distinguish between enveloped viruses and non-enveloped viruses. This lesson is also linked to our previous lesson, so if you haven't watched our lesson on the types of cells, please do so before you proceed with us. In our previous lesson, we looked at three types of cells. So we talked about eukaryotes, cells having membrane-bound nucleus, and then talked about prokaryotes as cells that have the genetic materials all right, but they do not have membranes surrounding them, so no membrane-bound nucleus. And then we talked about acaiotes as cells without nucleus at all. This lesson is going to actually focus on acaiotes, like I've said. And here we have a more precise definition of acaiotes as cells or cell-like particles that do not have nucleus. And we know that, yes, the central point for the definition is about the lack of nucleus. But here, there is some information that you also need to bear in mind. They are cells or cell-like particles. So note that point. And the most common examples of acaiotes are viruses. So an example is this virus called bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is a virus that attacks bacteria or infects bacteria. So like you see in the name bacteriophage, bacteria for bacteria and phage for feeding. So it's like saying feeding on bacteria. When you examine the structure of this acaiotes, you wouldn't find nucleus anywhere. So it is an acaiote. And let us also look at this. I know remember these cells, they are red blood cells. Red blood cells also do not have nucleus. So now the question is that, would you consider them as acaiotes? You can leave your answer in the comment section even before you proceed. Right. Now because we are aware that viruses are the most common examples of acaiotes, it is very important for us to then look at what viruses are. Good. From the definition of acaiotes, we know that they could be cells or cell-like particles. But the viruses are the cell-like particles. They are not considered as cells because they don't have the full nature of cells. So they are cell-like particles. And um, some scientists even define them as the link between unliving things and living things because viruses somehow are close to non-living things. And somehow they do things also as living things. So they are like the link between the two. Right. Now let's look at their structure. Since they are not really considered as cells, so how do they manage to survive? There is a core material called nucleic acid found in viruses. And when you're talking about nucleic acids, we are talking about DNA or RNA. DNA means deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA means ribonucleic acid. So DNA, deoxyribo giving the D, the N coming from the nucleic and A coming from acid. And RNA, ribo R, nucleic N, acid A. So this is the core material of viruses. Without this, they cannot survive as virus. Right. Now, since this is the core material and the most important component of viruses, in their structure, this thing must be protected. And it's protected by what you call the protein coat. Another name for the protein coat is capsid. So like stated in here, the protein coat protects the nucleic acid within the virus. But beside that, the protein coat also functions as a means of attachment to the host. Viruses are known to cause diseases because they enter cells and multiply within the cells. But before they enter the cell, they would have to attach themselves to the cell. So they attach themselves to the cell through the work of protein coat. And they also penetrate by the work of this same protein coat. And interestingly, there are some viruses that apart from the protein coat, they also have an envelope. So, although the protein coat is for protection of the nucleic acid, but outside of the protein coat, they have an envelope. 
So that would mean that they have something like double protection for themselves. Right. So let's look at these structures that I've talked about. Here we have bacteriophage on the left hand side, which is a virus and influenza virus on the right hand side. And we are comparing their structures here. This is showing the nucleic acid. So in the case of bacteriophage, you find the nucleic acid in the form of DNA. But for influenza virus, it is in the form of RNA. Good. So as shown here, DNA here and RNA here. And then there is the protein coat, which is also referred to as a capsid. Good. Now, I have also said that there is another structure that is called the membrane envelope, where some of the viruses have, others don't have. And we are going to use these same examples to compare. Now you see here, this is the protein coat of the bacteriophage. Outside of this protein coat, there is no other structure. So we see that there is no envelope. Now let's compare it to the situation of this one. There is an envelope here. This is the protein coat, the hexagonal structure. And you see the same hexagonal structure here. But outside this protein coat, there is an envelope. See the envelope around it. Right. So the viruses that have the membrane envelope are called the envelope viruses, like influenza virus. But the viruses that do not have the membrane envelope are called the non-envelope viruses. So we are going to see more examples of these envelope viruses. And of course, since these envelope viruses have double protection for their nucleic acid, they are more likely to survive and they cause the more serious diseases. So, for example, hepatitis B virus. It causes serious disease and it has membrane envelope. So it has some sort of double protection. SARS-CoV-2, that is COVID-19 virus, which we all know what has done in recent times. Then we can talk about several other examples like the Ebola virus, HIV, the influenza I've mentioned already, hepatitis C virus. They are all envelope viruses. So it means in addition to their protein coat, they have membrane envelope and they cause serious diseases because they survive better. Good. So this is what we have for our lesson today. And we have looked at what acaryotes are. And we came to talk about viruses specifically because they are the most common examples of acaryotes. Then we have looked at the structure of typical virus. And we ended by talking about envelope viruses as against non-envelope viruses. Okay. The questions that we have for today's lesson are going to be answered live. So as I project them here, then you also try to answer them. So the first one is you are going to state whether the statement here is true or false. The first statement. Viruses have nucleus. True or false? So my answer is false. Of course, we even heard that in our previous lesson and we have repeated it today too. The second one. All viruses are acaryotes. True or false? That is true. Third one. The nucleic acid of virus is protected by protein coat. True or false? It is true because the protein coat is their primary means of protection. Then all viruses have DNA. True or false? That is false because some viruses have RNA. Okay. So that is for question one. Let's move to question two. Which of these possesses a viral envelope? So you're going to choose either A or B. So it's B. Then finally, what are the two forms of viral nucleic acids? DNA or RNA? Good. So that is what we have for our lesson today. 
And in our next lesson, we are going to look at the mode of life of viruses. If viruses are not considered as true cells, how do they manage to survive? Right. So let's meet in our next lesson.